Alright, so let's go ahead and create our virtual machine. So to do that, we're going to use a, a software to help us to actually leverage or um, siphon some amount of resources from our host machine or our computer. So we're going to use Oracle VMbox to do that. In the enterprise or corporate world, you probably use VMware. Yeah, so I'll just go straight and for my VMware or my virtual box. So it's Oracle virtual box. All right. Then I'll do Oracle VM box. Click on it. And the view that shows says that Oracle VM virtual box manager. As you can see, already have some virtual machines which have been created or the service have been provisioned for some work I'm doing. But to go ahead with what we want to do, we have to click on new. And before you can even do the um, do the process of hand of provisioning a server or a virtual machine, you need to make sure that virtualization has been enabled. So the host machine must allow that flag or turn that flag on. If not for that, your virtualization process is not going to be successful. So you can check that by using Tax Manager. So Control Shift Escape and when you come to the performance tab, use good CPU. Is this virtualization has been enabled? So that's the go ahead that you can go ahead and do virtualization. You can enable this from your BIOS. If you are not sure, you just perform a Google search for your device. All right, so you click on new. You have create virtual machine. All right, so what's the virtual machine going to do? So from the um, understanding we have had from the previous cool films. Realize that it depends on what this machine is going to serve. Is it going to be applications? Is it going to be servers? Is it going to be mails? Is it going to be files? Is it going to be printers? You name it. Who is it for? Is it for outsiders? Is it for only customers here? Or is it for internal customers? Is it for external customers? Is it for businesses? So <laughs> that scope and all that is a whole different domain. But what we want is that we want to have an application server because we want to be able to deploy or release our applications onto that server so it doesn't exist on local so anyone in this on any level can have access to it based on whether he's supposed to have access or not or how it's supposed to be consumed the manner which is supposed to be consumed all right so we'll go ahead and call it app server i'll pull all in caps app server so probably later on you could say this could be the UK app server. <laughs> so that's for UK. So you can go on and on and on. <laughs> yes, but now app server. And where would you want to store this? You want to store this. Um, I have two drives, or oh, I have a drive that partition. And I like to keep on the drive that has enough resource because I have to siphon something from that drive. <laughs> So I'll go with drive D. It has 396 gigabytes free. Select folder. L. Let's keep it in a collection. Let's keep it in a collection. So let's go back and let's select that drive. And we'll keep all in VMs. So we'll keep them here. Select folder. And then we have to have that operating system we want to install on that virtual machine. So the ISO image, you have to get that online. I already have one that's with Ubuntu, so I'll just go ahead and click on the Ubuntu 22.05 live server ISO image. And the virtual machine manager has been able to detect that it's a Ubuntu and it's of type Linux, so a Linux operating system, and you are using Ubuntu. Alright, so if you do know something about the Linux from Ubuntu, we have this uh, big uh, ecosystem whereby every um, dice tool, there are different dice tools for um, the Linux flavor based on the uh, Linux kernel. So you that history <laughs> or that um, that dice tree, we are going with the Ubuntu dice tree. If you're not f happy with that, you can go the um, other dice trees over there. I think we have a uh, open source and other ones. Yeah, or the Linux Mint and the other versions that you have there. Uh, if you can go even go straight to the Debian's <laughs> that street on top of the you want to just go hit the higher dice tree. If not, you can come down and look for one that suits you, probably Red Hat or what have you. All right, so that's just by the way. We have a lecture on Linux and then just 
as a relation to a developer not extensively so we'd click skip on attended and you uh, go with next so we are comfortable we are fine now it's left with system requirements you know installing the system you have to get the right system requirements so the operating system on the virtual machine can make room for that um always that we are come to put on top of it and you can do a google search to get that so aside aside doing a google search for the iso image you want to download sorry if it's a windows server you can go and download the iso image you can also do a google search for the system requirement requirement for ubuntu the version 2.04 server and that will help you to, or that'll be a guide for you to know how much um, uh, hardware resources you need to allocate so you can go ahead and click on what you see based on what you are searching for so we'll go with this one and when we scroll down it goes ahead to tell you that it tells you a lot of stuff so it just says 22.04 minimum of 1 gigahertz that's RAM minimum of 1 gigabyte of RAM that's for the processor this for the CPU this is for the RAM and this is for your disk space 20 gig of hard disk space in 64 bit architecture and the 64 bit architecture is coming from your host so we'll just stick with what we have over there so we'll just probably increase the RAM size to 4 the RAM size will make it 4 gigabytes or 5 then it's one processor just one processor my this machine or this device is a simple uh, it's a quad core processor one processor with in four independent units doing the work and you can find all that using system information so if you do control R and do CMD you type system info it will produce all the information you need to know about your device if you are not comes you are not okay with this view so this is what it shows it gives you all the information you need to know about host name which we we will look at later and tells you about the processor installed and what it does the kind of module that it's on it if you are not fine with this view you can actually use a different view and go to window and go to explorer just launch to the file explorer where we have this pc so let's go to this pc um, this pc and go to system properties system properties will let you know more about it gives you a bit more about your uh so it's an i7 it's one processor and it's at 1.80 gigabytes and 1.2 so it's telling you the range and also it tells you the ram if you're okay you're also okay with this you don't see what you want and it tells you it's a 64 base processor you can also, also view more of this in the tax manager you go to the tax manager and you find out that performance and here it tells you about four cores and it has been enabled four cores so that you can actually see that you know what you're handling with and the two this the, the cpu activity so uh, that's 36 percent has been used of the CPU, the, C the CPU utilization, and it gives you the speed that the clock is running at. Yeah, so yeah, that's just a basic for you to know, uh, just for you to appreciate what's going on. Yep, yeah. and for memory, you get to know this 12 gig RAM. Yep, yeah, so the basic stuff. All right, let's continue. Um, so. We, do we live so we we'll do 5 gig and still one processor just one processor because our host has one processor so we'll go with next then we just virtual hard disk 25 is okay we click that this already click on next then we are ready so we we'll just click finish now I just leave with the installation so we are going to actually start the machine and we'll do the installation so it says powering VM up so for us to have that field that we're actually doing something inside the virtual machine, 
we will enter into a full screen mode and see that we're in a different system we're not on the same system though it's from the same host we're entering into a different system all right so the vm box has started and it's going to do all the work so it says try or install ubuntu server so let's change the view make it skilled switch and then um, make it full screen yeah so this is a good view so you click on trial and install ubuntu server then we start the installation process so there are some key um there are some key takeaways you have to note when you are actually doing vm installation and that really affects the developers most of the time and it also helps you to when you are doing some form of debugging or even some form of connection you have to be sure that you are using the right details so it's still running it's still setting up so let's just give it a while to be done soon all right so <sighs> so as you can see we are in the same host but we are actually creating a virtual machine on this host and that virtual machine is going to do applic is going to serve applications so that is the purpose of this um, server we are creating so let's follow the installation process so we don't have english we select english and it says keyboard layout we just do done us and done <laughs> don't worry about this just do done all you want to make sure that you've installed it and just do done click continue it's talking about testing the url first you click on continue it says use an entire disk space which we want so we'll click on done because we've allocated 25 gig round, 25 gig of hard disk space done and here's about the file system you know uh, the root and then the boots we look at all this later on so just click on done just click on done don't worry too much about all this uh, if you're a little bit uh, for linus but you know that we have the root but for every hard drive that you establish on your linus it has a root and that root for any device that you let's say give any external memory to it it still points to your root it's not like windows whereby you have um, you have your windows drive d and and drive c no it's all attached to the root we look at that later so when you're doing your developer work we can see how it affects us all right so yes well this way is very more important to me your name your service name username and password and the reason is that your name for your name just put we just put cool films there we are fine with that but your service name the service name is actually the name of the host and when i say the name of the host that's the name of the machine and it's really very very important because most of the issues that will pop up later on probably if you are logging it it looks obscure if you don't really know how this is being done so if i name this your service and make it app server that's the name of the host let's so, so see, i still don't get it okay let's go back to our windows box so is when you come to our windows box here and we want to check our computer name we did a system info before and the system info we did the host name is this is the name of the computer that's the host name so if you have any application that's running on this if you ask you what's the host name that's the name of the host and then we have a user which is being attached to this host name so the registered user that we was created was registered another was created was user and then the and he's tied to this host this host all right so that's the name if you're not okay with this because of the way it is presenting itself you can actually go into um this 
P this PC and click on system properties and you see system properties now, now it now says device name and it all ref make reference to the same name that we saw as host name so that's a that's where the confusion can come in so when you see the device name is the host name or what's the device name that's the host name and like you're lost <laughs> so this is the desktop it's the same name that you can check from it's the same name and you can actually change this you can do this by even the rename this pc advanced or click on rename this pc and when you're going to rename this pc you're actually trying to change the device name so you change the device name you are changing the host name so it's that variable that you are changing so we are trying to change that variable so you just give your description here but you say change then to rename this computer and I what you are doing is you are changing the computer name as for now you may not see the importance of it but let's look at a case whereby let's come out of our box a case whereby you're a user and then you've been tied to this um, this device you know as computers it's not only a single user it's a multi-user multiple users can have access to a computer because uh, the resources on the computer are a lot so we can't just attach one user to it no there will be several users to that and you can set permissions or groups for those that have to have access to that computer that's how powerful a computer is so this window or this screen has seen if i'm logging in right now i'm logging in as a user and that user i'm logging in is this the user i'm using and then um i'll give it a pin and a password so Samo or cool films or Chrissy can be the username and I'll just give my pin or password but before that you can address that there's another one which is the administrator so there can be a number of profiles there and all that profiles will be tied to that same device so just have that in mind so if you come now here and say pick a username the username we're going to have for this is going to be app user and the reason is that they are going to be application users <laughs> so app user is the name and then password will be app user then 2024 so app user 2024 so that user of the server is an app user because he's going to use this applications over there that's fine just <laughs> flow <laughs> later on some distance will just come but this is very key the profile setup the service name pick a username and choose a password and your password so you have to have that right so app user 2024 click on done then we just click on continue and one thing that is very important is that aside using http to get resources from a server you may want to also so enter the server and do something else and that we can do that with SSH so we're going to say yes we will install SSH open SSH server and click on done oh god I don't need micro I don't need the micro this is a package I think it's trying to install a package as to what I want to do I don't need that I don't need that So click on close. All I need is done. That's all I need. So I don't store any other package on that line of box. All I need is just this done. So we're going to wait for it to f f install. Once the installation is done, we we'll come back. Then we go ahead and deploy our application here. But the key takeaway is that please don't forget the profile setup that we came across, which makes reference to which makes reference to your device name and your host name and for you to really appreciate some understanding we have in the future so when it's ready then we really appreciate it so that's very important your host name device name user and password is very very important so let's give it a while then we'll, we'll come back and attend to this